What's going on guys, Bust Up A6 here, back to another video, and today I have an album review for you guys. This time I'm going over the latest offer from the One Man Black Speed and Thrash Metal Project, Hell Ripper, with War Warlocks Grim and Withered Hags. This album comes out on the February, uh, February 17th of 2023 on Peacefell Records, which... It's kind of interesting considering that Peacefell really doesn't have that many black metal bands, maybe aside from the more noble one that is Dark Throne. Now, this is a one-man project, though this has some session musicians in here. Um, Hell Ripper, um, I think this um, band formed, I think around 2018 or 2019, and this is his third studio album overall. And it's a one-man, his name is James McMain. James McBain, and wow, absolutely wow, um, this album, I've been hearing a lot of praise about this band, ever since their album from 2020, The Affairs of Poison, or, or The Affair of Poisons, or something like that, it, back in 2020, I've been hearing nothing but praise from this band, and well, I gotta say, this album certainly lived up to the hype, because... Mm -hmm. This album, I I have almost no words to say, but just bravo with this one, Mr. McBain, because you, my good sir, hit a home run with this one, you beautiful Scottish bastard. This album kind of wastes no time getting into it. From the opening track of the the Nakalivi, this album has nothing but riffs and solos when it comes to guitars and. This thing is basically going at 90 miles per hour and doesn't stop till the brakes don't until the brakes aren't working. This thing is just full blown, almost bullet train aggression. And this thing, when it comes to like the thrash and speed metal parts, it's absolutely beautiful. But you also have some like more classical metal uh, metal mo um, metal moments, kind of like an Iron Maiden or Juice Priest on this album, uh, the Nakalevi has this very almost, it's a very speed metal-ish song, more of a thrash metal song, but it very much feels like you're listening to like a Megadeth or like almost like an early Metallica album in some ways. And I do want to comment on the production. Production is flawless in my opinion. The, the instrumentation sounds exactly how it's supposed to sound. And I really love how basically how old school the vocals sound, kind of akin to like an 80s bath rig or like a 90s dark throne in a way, because James is just kind of croaking his ass off throughout this entire album. Um, you have Eye to the Seaver, which has these very interesting, um, um, I wouldn't really say riffs in a way, because the riffs are not really interchangeable, but they don't sound the same either. And I, I just, my mind's blown. I cannot stress on how great this album is. I did, guys, I, it's almost hard to put into words how great this uh, album is. But I the Deceiver is just very in your face aggression. And in some ways, this album also has some like epic moments on the, the, the Nakalevi. And especially on the last eight minute, tr on the last track which is uh, Meister Storeroom Worm, which is, I think, uh, from what I've heard, this is the longest track they've ever done. And it's like almost eight or eight or so minutes of just epic, epic riffs, brutality, kind of death metal-ish in a way because of the growls. It is just absolutely amazing. Um, some of my favorite tracks here, I love the title track, the title track's got a really cool groove to it, um, I don't, I, the, the song title's absolutely amazing, like, Goat Vomit Nightmare, first of all, awesome song title, and second of all, a kick-ass song in its own right, it's almost, kind of got like a Slayer, almost like a Testament vibe on it, but the one track that really stands out is the Cursed Carry On Crown, which... That is a very much a Razor song in some ways. And you also have some like more speedy moments, more like akin to Motorhead, like on the Hissy Marshes 
that's basically a Motorhead song, except blackened. Like if Motor, if Lemmy turned into a demonic frog in a way, it's basically a Motorhead song, but like more brutal in a way. This album kind of has no waste, no time of saying what it is and what it's wanting to say. And you also have Poison Womb, The Curse of the Witch. Very, very catchy melody. It's a very catchy melody. It's like, the curse of the witch. Oh, just absolutely beautiful. And I also do want to comment on the, also the title track. It also has these folky-like elements too. It also has like some Celtic Frost-like vibes on it too. But I really like the folky vibe with like the bagpipes that adds a little more atmosphere to it. Which I really do like. And not to mention, James also does the production as well. And he does a damn good job of producing this album. And I, I, I can't stress on how great this album is. Um, I know I kind of didn't do that good of a job talking how great this album is. But folks, this is one of the few albums I say I have nothing else to say. But really check this one out. Overall... As much as I love Sing with Sigabog's Homicidal Ecstasy, this beats it. I'm giving this an A+. I, there was not a moment on the album that I did not like. And we're only halfway through February. Still got a little bit to go here. And if this is still my album of the year, we're in for a ride. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. What did you guys think about this album? Let me know in the comment section below. Make sure you guys... Uh, leave a like, leave a comment, tap that big red subscribe button, and tap that little bell for, for notifications when I upload. Thank you guys for watching this video. Most importantly, join the herd. Talk to the next video. Peace out.